This is how to score over a thousand in the HESI Med Surge exam, how you can score over 850 and even score above a thousand. So the TB um, tuberculosis, this is a heavily tested topic for HESI's, ATIs, and the NCLEX. And some medications that you should be familiar with include rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazidamine, and it's important to know that prolonged therapy for six to nine months is required when you have a patient positive for TB. Um, just be aware that this medication, it doesn't last a few days or weeks, but it's prolonged therapy. And this is key to knowing how to answer questions that you may be, um, you, that you may encounter with TB. Um, TB questions tend to ask um, how long therapy usually lasts and just remember it's prolonged and it usually lasts six to nine months. The type of precautions is airborne. It is particulate absorbing mask that should be used and not a surgical mask. So just remember that it's airborne and it's a particulate absorbing mask. Um, when doing testing for TB, the best um, testing you could do is a sputum collection for at least two to three days. And just know that it should not be done all at once, but it should be consecutively. Um, for the negative sputum smear, this means that TB is no longer, um, it no longer can be transmitted via the airborne route. Also, if you are asked um, a question, for example, where they say uh, a patient comes in and they say that they have orange secretions and your reply should be, this is normal. Um, for example, they might have orange tears or urine when patients are taking the medication rifampin and isoniazid. This is an expected um, outcome that they would have orange secretions. Also, a yellow tin sclera is a sign of hepatotoxicity of rifampin and isoniazid. The BCG vaccine shows positive um, MANTU tests. Okay, another heavily tested topic is pancreatitis. Um, one should know that if um, there's elevated lipase, this is an indication of pancreatitis. Um, Medications to treat pancreatitis include, um, well, should be taken at mealtime. This is something that you should know that these medications should be taken at mealtime. And um, patients with this have a high risk for hypocalcemia. One sign to look out for with hypocalcemia is the Vostek sign and the Trosu sign. The Vostek sign is where you twi where there's twitching of the facial muscles when the cheek is tapped. The Trosu sign um, occurs when a patient is wearing a blood pressure cuff and when inflated over the systolic pressure experiences a carpal spasm. So make sure you remember this. Um, the abdominal mass is of most concern due to the possibility of an abscess, decreased pain um, with NPO status, and this is something you can expect because then there's decreased activity um, in the stomach, your gastrointestinal system, so it, thus if you like um, decrease eating and you're on NPO status, that helps to decrease pain. The colon sign, this is where you have the area around the umbilicus. It has ecchymosis, which is a sign of severe acute pancreatitis. Okay, so senile angiotagenes, these are age spots that are normal in older patients. They are irregular round lesions. Stroke, when you, if you get a question asking about stroke, um, always remember it is important to assess pupil, si pupil size, vitals, and consciousness. And screening for dysphagia is necessary before oral intake is resumed. What are some signs of fluid overload? Um, dyspnea and tachycardia. These are signs of fluid overload in a patient with acute kidney injury. As I said, guys, these are some topics that you should know for your med surge exam for HESI's, ATI's, and your NCLEX. Hypertension, it's most prevalent in African males. Okay, so we're going to do some practice questions now. And the first question is, 
U, the RN, cares for a patient who was admitted a few hours previously with back pain after an accident. Which action can the RN delegate to a UAP? A, determine the patient's priority problems. B, finish documenting the admission assessment. C, obtain the health history from the patient's caregiver. And D, take the patient's temperature, pulse, and blood pressure. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to think about it and come up with an answer. And if you selected, take the patient's temperature, pulse, and blood pressure, you are correct. Just remember, um, a UAP, they cannot do anything um, relating to API. Um, they cannot assess, diagnose, um, come up with priority problems, teach, but they can take... Um, the patient's temperature, pulse, and blood pressure. They can take vital signs. Okay, the patient who was admitted to the hospital with hyperglycemia and newly diagnosed diabetes is scheduled for discharge the second day after admission. When implementing patient teaching, what is the priority action for the nurse? A, provide detailed information about dietary control of glucose. B, teach glucose self-monitoring and medication administration. C. Give information about the effects of exercise on glucose control. D. Instruct about the risk for cardiovascular disease with hyperglycemia. So if you guys came up with the answer, B. Teach glucose self-monitoring and medication administration, you are correct. So always remember that when answering these questions, most times the question contains a part of the answer. For example, it says in this question, this patient was admitted with hyperglycemia and has been newly diagnosed. And this person is going to be discharged. So what is the most important thing for you to do to help this patient with their newly diagnosed diabetes? It will be to teach glucose self-monitoring and medication administration. This is what will help. This is what is answering your question and what, what, what will be priority in helping a patient that's newly diagnosed with this disease. Okay, an older Asian patient seen at the clinic is diagnosed with protein malnutrition. What action should a nurse plan to implement first? A. Suggest the use of liquid supplements as a way to increase protein intake. B. Encourage the patient to increase the dietary intake of meat, cheese, and milk. C. Ask the patient to record the intake of all foods and beverages for a three-day period. D. Focus on the use of combinations of beans and rice to improve the daily protein intake. So if you selected, ask the patient to record the intake of all foods and beverages for a three-day period, you are correct. So this is also a question that is seen on many um, test banks, on many practice questions, and this is helping you to be able to further assess. If you ask the patient to record the intake of all foods and beverages for a three-day period, um, then you'll be, you're getting more information that you need and you're getting further assessments done. Okay, a man diagnosed with diabetes says, I want to understand how to give my own insulin. What action should you complete first? A. Demonstrate how to draw up and administer insulin. B. Discuss the use of exercise to decrease insulin needs. C. Teach about differences between the various types of insulin. D. Provide handouts about therapeutic and adverse effects of insulin. So if you selected A, you are correct demonstrate how to draw up and administer insulin. So this one is pretty straightforward. Hopefully you understood why this answer is correct. Which nursing action will be most helpful in decreasing the risk for drug-to-drug -drug interactions in an older adult? Teach the patient to have all prescriptions filled at the same pharmacy. Make a schedule for the patient as a reminder of when to take each medication. Ask the patient to bring all medications, supplication and herbs, supplements and herbs to each appointment. Instruct the patient to avoid taking over-the-counter medications or supplements. So guys, remember, okay, let's see. If you selected C, 
Ask the patient to bring in all medication, supplements, and herbs to each appointment. This is directly answering the question. How would you know if there is a drug-to-drug -drug interaction? You have to further assess and have that patient bring in those medication. Otherwise, the, the other answers is not directly answering the question. So remember to read your question um, slowly and properly. Okay, the nurse will assess an older patient who takes diuretics and has a possible UTI. Which action should a nurse take first? Palpate over the suprapubic area, inspect for abdominal distension, question the patient about hematuria, request the patient to empty the bladder. If you guys selected request the patient to empty the bladder, you are correct. So knowing that this patient is taking diuretics and has a possible UTI, um, this will be able to help you to further assess that patient if he has that empty bladder. As he empties that bladder, that will make it easier to be able for you to be able to assess and get um, the information you need. Otherwise, if you if you keep if he keeps that bladder full, it's he's gonna be in pain. It's gonna be uncomfortable, and he will experience discomfort while you assess. Okay. The nurse on a surgical inpatient unit is caring for several patients. Which patient should the nurse assess first? Patients with post-op pain who received morphine sulfate, patient who received Dilaudid one hour ago, patient who was treated for pain prior to return from the PACU, patient with neuropathic pain who is scheduled to receive a dose of Lortab. If you selected the patient who was treated for pain just prior to return from the PACU, you are correct. Um, this one is also pretty straightforward. You know that patient was experiencing pain before, and now that they have come back from the PACU, they are also going to be in pain. So you want to keep on top of that pain medication. Okay, a 76-year-old with benign or BPH, prostate hypoplasia, is agitated and confused with markedly distended bladder. Which intervention prescribed by the healthcare provider should the nurse implement first? Insert a indwelling urinary catheter, draw blood for a serum creatinine level, schedule an intravenous pyelinogram, administer lorazepam. If you selected insert an indwelling urinary catheter, you're correct. Now, guys, this is another question where you can see um, part of the answer was in the question. Oh, it's hinted. That person had a distended bladder, and the only thing to relieve that is inserting a urinary catheter. Okay, a patient admitted with AKI due to dehydration has oliguria, anemia, and hyperkalemia. Which prescribed action should the nurse take first? Insert a urinary retention catheter, administer epoetin alpha, place the patient on a cardiac monitor, or give sodium polycystrine sulfonate. If you selected place the patient on a cardiac monitor, you are correct. So we know that this patient has AKI and they have oliguria, anemia, and hyperkalemia. So once you see hyperkalemia, you know that it's something relating to the heart. And how could you further assess if their heart is being affected is only if they're on a cardiac monitor. During routine hemodialysis, a patient reports nausea and dizziness. Which action should a nurse take first? Slow down the rate of dialysis, check the blood pressure, review hematocrit level, or give prescribed anti-hematic drugs. If you selected check the blood pressure, you are correct. This is another question where you can apply um, API, assess um, your patient, and as you see here, assessing the patient, um, that, that answer is checking for blood pressure. Also, if you do your ABCDs, um, you'll also see that this is, there's nothing with airway, breathing, but this directly deals with circulation. Okay. The charge nurse observed a newly hired nurse performing all of the following interventions for a patient who has just undergone right cataract removal and an inter 
intraocular lens implant, which action requires that the charge nurse intervene. If you select an answer that says the nurse encourages the patient to cough, you are correct. So a person who has cataract, you know that they have that high um, pressure in their eye. They, they have that high pressure. And if you're encouraging that patient to cough, that would just increase that pressure and make things worse. So this, is, this would require the nurse to intervene. Finally, um, these are some points that I would employ you to remember in preparation for your HESI or your ATI medical surgical exam. How do you promote venous return? Um, you elevate the legs above the heart level. One unit of packed red blood cells increases the count by 3%. So if you give four units, then you can expect it to increase by 12%. Stroke victims need to be screened for dysphagia, as mentioned before. If someone has esophageal varices and you see that they're vomiting blood, that is something you need to report to your healthcare provider. And a client who has cataract, some implementation a nurse should do is instruct the client to wear an eye shield to prevent rubbing the eye. So remember to subscribe, share, subscribe, and like, and turn on your notification button for more HESI, ATI, and NCLEX tips.